Hey, this is Trey Burke at the Young Hollywood Studio. I'm excited for my interview. Let's go see the other room. Now, Young Hollywood, you know we're all about fresh finds. We have a fresh find right here, the one and only Trey Burke. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So it's now, now it's not just Trey Burke. It's NBA player <laughs> Trey Burke. What's it like now that you can say NBA in front of that? This it's, it's great. It's a um, dream come true. It's a, you know a goal that I've set since day one. And um, now that I'm here, you know, seeing that all the hard work paid off. You know. Now a lot of people thought you were going to be here a year ago because when. You know, that season was done, everyone's like, all right, he's going straight to the NBA. All right. and, and you made a decision that surprised a lot of people by going back to school. What, what was the main driver for that? I just think it was the right decision for me. Obviously, I, I could have went to the NBA last year, but I think um, coming back for a second year uh, at the University of Michigan, you know, chipping away at my degree, because I do plan on going back and um, finishing school. Um, I just think it was the best for me. You know, we had a really good season my sophomore year, made a, made a, uh, a, a good run, and um, I think it was just, it all worked out. I, I like how you're so modest. We made a good run. Yeah, we yeah. went to the championships. <laughs> it's, it's a good run. No, 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 no big deal, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was a good run. Um, you know, I don't want to sound over, you know, overly uh, conceited, but I think we did um, exceed a lot of people's expectations. We were a young team. Yeah, you a know. lot of freshmen. You had what three freshmen yeah, we starters had, on that team? Yeah, we had three freshmen starters, and wow. uh, actually, we had five freshmen. And all five of them ended up playing. Now, were you, was there more pressure, you think, you know, the fourth quarter of that championship game or draft day? I think draft day. I think in the championship game, I think I was so ready to, I won't say win, but I, I, I was already, my adrenaline was pumping. And um, at the end of the day, I think both were great experiences. And, um, you know, I'm glad to be in Utah. And when Minnesota made the, the trade <laughs> for the picks, like, did you yeah. know what was coming? Like, what's that like <laughs> when you're sitting there and all these things are happening, people are, like trading two first round picks for, for the potential it, to get it, you? It goes to show you how quick of a business it is. You know, I found out very quick that it was a business. 10 minutes after I got drafted by the Timberwolves, I found out I was getting traded. Uh, and I think it was, it was a good decision. Um, and, and it's a good fit for me as well because, you know, obviously the Minnesota, uh, Minnesota Timberwolves have Ricky Rubio, you know, who's a guy that, you know, is potentially an all-star in um, Utah Jazz. You know, they don't have an actual point guard right now, so I think it was a, a better fit for me. Yeah, and there's talk maybe starting point guard, which would be a, a pretty big deal yeah. for, for a rookie to come in, even if it's not at the beginning of the season, even if it happens Absolutely. after all-star break. That's, Absolutely. That's I think, a and big I, deal. And that's my goal, is to start um, beginning of the year. And like you said, if it doesn't happen, then eventually, you know, play myself into a starting role. But, um, you know, I'm just... I'm excited, man. It's, it's sort of surreal right now, knowing that I'm in the NBA, you know, at the age of 20. And now Tim Hardaway Jr. was also in your, in your draft class. Yeah. Now, was there any, like, competition at all? Like, who's <laughs> going to go ahead of who? Nah, not at all. Me, me and Tim, we, we have a really good bond. And, um, you know, he, he's one of the, the best teammates I've played with, not only on the court, but just as far as a teammate. So, you know, wherever he landed, you know, I was just as excited as, as he was for me. And, um, you know, I think New York is a great fit for him. You know, I talked to a lot of the NBA guys, a lot of NBA general managers when I, um, you know, interviewed for him and they asked me about him. And, you know, I just told them wherever he goes, you know, they're, they're going to be getting a good player who can shoot the ball and who's going to help them win. Right. Now, his father is obviously the legendary NBA player, Tim Hardaway. Right, right. Like, did you get to interact with Tim at all? Was he there? So what's that like when you have a legend that's, that's coming to some it's, games and practices? Any advice from him? It, oh, a lot of advice. You know, uh, uh, Tim Hardaway Sr. was... You know, at the majority of our games, um, specifically my sophomore year and Tim's junior year, he came to a lot of games. And he just let me know, you know, keep playing, you know, keep focusing on your weaknesses and seeing what you need to improve on, especially since you're about to, you know, take that next step to the NBA. And uh, it, it's a lot of advice he, he, he gave me. I, you know, I can't just sit here and tell you everything right. he said, but, you know, he's a guy that's, that was always in my corner and was always willing to help. Who are you most looking forward to playing against? Man, everyone. <laughs> I, I would say all of the top guards in the NBA because, you know, I know that you know, this is going to make me better. Um, right. You know, it's my first year in the NBA, and I plan on having a long NBA career. So, you know, just <clears> going <throat> up against guys like Chris Paul. I was going to say, there's some comparisons to you and Chris Paul. You know, same height. Yeah. I think you're a little taller, though, right? <laughs> Last year, I think we were about the same height, so hopefully <laughs> I, I grew a little bit till I, I had that edge. But, um, you know, guys like Chris Paul, you know, the the Tony Parkers and those type of guys, you know, I know those are going to be 
the big challenges for me, and um, I'm looking forward to you know going against those guys. There's was an interesting quote someone said about you. They said, I'm sure you saw that you might not be the most athletic. You're certainly mm -hmm. not the biggest guy on the court. Mm -hmm. but you're probably the best guy in the draft. Like that. That's a big statement. That's a compliment that I, whoever said it, thank right. you. <laughs> and um, you know, I'm just I've always been a hard worker. I think that's what what has gotten me to where I am today. And I, I just plan on continuing to work hard and. Um, you know, just continue to increase. And you have to adapt that. the game, obviously, because NBA is a little bit different, much quicker. Right. You know, right, shot clock's right. different, all that. Right. How are you going to start start being able to adapt to that to that quicker pace game? I think uh, you know I, that comes from you know being more of a student of the game off the court. You know, watching film. And, Who do you watch? Who do you study when you're when you're looking at film? Yeah, in college we watched a lot of ourselves. You know, the coaches got on us a lot when we wouldn't do certain things. We were watching Michigan. Right. You know, now that I'm, you know, in the NBA, I'll, I'm sure I'll be watching guys in my position, such as, like I said, Tony Parker's, you know, smaller guards, and, um, and then guards that were, you know, in the Utah Jazz system, you know, year, uh, before, so I can, you know, pick up on the culture and things like that. And, uh, you know, it, it's going to be an adjustment. It's going to be a process for me to get used to the speed and get used to the shot clock. But it's definitely, I definitely can make that uh, that jump. Now, you're here for the ESPYs, that's why you're in L.A., so, mm -hmm. so we got to talk about that. It's a pretty big award show. Yeah, absolutely. It's so what's it like now walking the red carpet and, and doing this whole thing? It, it's, that's another dream come true. Uh, it, it's funny because the beginning of the year in, at Michigan, you know, I was like, dang, it'll be, it'll be amazing if I was able to get nominated for an ESPY, rather if it was for a play or anything. Right. You know, I always wanted to be in the ESPYs. And who do you think some of the other fresh finds are that are out there? The guy that I'm competing with right now, Johnny Menzel, I think he's obviously one of the big names in, you know, in the whole sports world right now. Yep. And, um, you know, I just respect him personally because of, you know, I know how much work he's put in. You know, he's getting a lot thrown at him right now from the media, obviously. But, you know, I think that's a guy who... You know, I respect a lot, and you know, I'm looking forward to meeting him as well. And who else you want to meet? Because you're going to be an award show with sort uh, right, of all, right, all the legends, right. everyone you, you've looked up to. LeBron, you know, Have you I, met LeBron I've already, yet? I've already met yeah, LeBron. Cleveland, I'm but, sure you. You know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Um, you know, Miguel Cabrera. Uh, I think I seen Jimmy Johnson today. I don't know if it was him, but I think I did see him. So a couple other things. You you got a lot of tats on you. Yeah. We have something we like to call tat chat, mm -hmm. where we get into what's going on here. So you got you got to take us through some of these tats. What do we uh, got? Well, right here I have a uh, um, a little kid sitting on a basketball who, when people ask me, I say it's me. It doesn't look like me, but I say it's me. And it says, vision without action is daydream. And action without vision is nightmare. Basically saying, you know, if you have a vision and, um, you know, you're not putting in the work to get to that vision, then, you know, basically it's day, you're just daydreaming. And if you have the work, ethic and you're not you don't really have a vision right. or you know something to look forward to in the future then it's a nightmare because you're working for no reason pretty much and then back here is just this uh columbus um spelled out and then the skyline of downtown columbus um, where i was raised at and, you know i think i put that on my body because that, that was a significant part of my life just being raised in columbus and you know, not a lot of people make it out of Columbus. So right here is a, a rose of my mother. This was actually my first tattoo. Um, you know, I have to, I probably have to get it retouched up, but it says Rhonda. Her name's Rhonda Burke, and it's just a rose right here. So wow. What about up here? What do we got? Your past success. Your past success is the enemy of your God-given potential. Wow. So just uh, going back to complacency. You know, you may get some success, and then. Some guys get complacent. Some guys use that success as more motivation. Another thing we like to do, we, we call when I make it big. So mm -hmm. now you're there. You finally you made it big. You're in the NBA. What are like the things you said when I do make it big? This is what I'm gonna do. And, and what have you already started to do now that now that you got the deal? Uh, I think I've, I've always been the type that that seen a lot of like uh, nice clothes that I wanted to wear when I was growing up, and you know I couldn't necessarily get them because I was too young and couldn't afford them. Um, so I think just, you know, my wardrobe has changed a lot over the last couple of months. You know, I, I, I've found myself going shopping more than I've ever went shopping in my life, um, as well as, uh, I would say, just, just enjoying myself. You know, I think that's the biggest thing when you're an athlete, you know, a lot of your time is being taken up yep. by whatever you're doing. So I like to just get out, go bowling, you know, go to the movies, play video games, just enjoy myself, really. Um, I'm driving right now a Porsche Panamera. Not bad. And yeah, it's 
that's my first car and I had to learn how to drive it first. You right. know, those was one of the cars where you have to be, be cautious. So. And what about advice now? There are a lot of young folks that are going to be looking up to you like you were looking up to people when you, know, when you were coming through. Well, what's the advice when you know, they're hoping one day maybe I can make it in the NBA? My, my biggest advice, I was actually reading a book earlier, um, you know, and it was just talking about just work ethic. Whatever your craft may be, if it's basketball, if it's drawing, you know, being a doctor, whatever, you know, the, the, the more work you put into it, the, you know, the more sacrifice you make for that craft, yep. the, then, you know, the more likable your, your dream is going to become. And I, you know, I've seen it firsthand, you know, not only with myself, but with guys that I know in the NFL and the NBA that have sacrificed a lot of things, the partying, and just the, just the typical things that may, you know, dwarf your dreams. You know? um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing, is just working hard. I gotta say, Trey Burke, this guy's got a good head on his shoulders. It, it's not what you think with, with, you know, some athletes. I mean, you've, you've really thought this through, that the yeah. tattoos, everything has a meaning, yeah. it's very deep. Yeah. Keeping his family close, you know, making sure you got the smart people around you. Absolutely. Thinking through your freshman year when anybody else would have made that jump to NBA, you didn't, you, right. you stuck through it, and now you've actually strategized sort of, mm -hmm. sort of the future. That's, Absolutely. Keep your eye on this, guys. We said in the beginning, the fresh find, Trey Burke, Guarantee you this is a name and a face you will be hearing a lot of in the next few years. Hand in hand, maybe with Chris Paul and, and Tony Park. I, I see it, man. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll That's see. the goal. That's the goal. Appreciate you guys for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for coming through. Trey Burke.